Welcome to Today in Nerd History. The Space Shuttle Challenger disaster occurred on January 28, 1986. The NASA Space Shuttle Orbiter Challenger, OV-099, Mission STS-51-L, broke apart 73 seconds into flight, leading to the deaths of its seven crew members, which included five NASA astronauts and two payload specialists. The spacecraft disintegrated over the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Cape Canaveral, Florida at 11.39 Eastern Standard Time. Disintegration of the vehicle began after an O-ring seal and its right solid rocket booster failed at liftoff. The O-ring failure caused the breach in the joint it sealed, allowing pressurized burning gas from within the solid rocket motor to reach the outside and impinge on the adjacent aft field joint attachment hardware and external fuel tank. This led to the separation of the right hand aft field joint attachment and the structural failure of the external tank. Aerodynamic forces broke up the orbiter. The crew compartment and many other vehicle fragments were eventually recovered from the ocean floor after a lengthy search and recovery operation. The exact timing of the death of the crew is unknown. Several crew members are known to have survived the initial breakup of the spacecraft. The shuttle had no escape system and the impact of the crew compartment to the ocean surface was too violent to be survivable. The disaster resulted in a 32-month hiatus in the shuttle program and the formation of the Rogers Commission, a special commission appointed by the United States President Ronald Reagan to investigate the accident. The Rogers Commission found NASA's organizational culture and decision-making process had been key contributing factors to the accident. NASA managers had known since 1977 that contractor Morton Thickle's design of the solid rocket boosters contained a potentially catastrophic flaw in the O-rings, but they had failed to address this problem properly. They also disregarded warnings from engineers about the dangers of launching posed by the low temperatures of that morning and failed to adequately report these technical concerns to their supervisors. What the Rogers Commission report did not highlight was that the vehicle was never certified to operate in temperatures that low. The O-rings, as well as many other critical components, had no test data to support any expectation of a successful launch in such conditions. Bob Ebeling of Thickle delivered a biting analysis. We're only qualified to 40 degrees, he said. What business does anyone even have thinking about 18 degrees? We're in no man's land. Ken Eliff, a former NASA chief scientist who had worked on the space shuttle program since its first mission and the X-15 program before that, stated in an official 2004 NASA publication violating a couple of mission rules was the primary cause of the Challenger accident. The Star Trek The Next Generation episode, The Wounded, aired January 28, 1991. In this episode, to prevent a war, Picard must stop a renegade Federation ship that is attacking Cardassian vessels. The Star Trek Enterprise episode Babel 1 aired January 28, 2005. In this episode, the Enterprise Benign Cooperation 
in a peace conference between Tellarites and Andorians turns dangerous when a secret Romulan vessel begins attacking ships on all sides. The Star Trek Discovery episode, What's Past is Prologue, aired January 28th, 2018. In this episode, Lorca plans to move forward with a coup against the Emperor and Burnham must make a quick decision to save the Discovery. Remembering Arnold Moss Born January 28, 1910 and passed away December 15, 1989. He began his career on Broadway in 1930 and continued to perform plays there until the late 1950s. And in the mid-1940s, he added TV and movies to his acting range, working there until the late 1970s. He was the father of Jeff Moss, a founding writer of the Sesame Street PBS television program. He made one Star Trek appearance in The Conscience of the King as Anton Caridian, also known as Kodos the Executioner. He co-starred in the 1949 movie Border Incident and also in The Fool Killer. He was on an episode of Bonanza and an episode of Serpico. He passed away from lung cancer. Happy Birthday, John Beck, born January 28, 1943. He made his first television appearance as an actor in his own right in a 1965 episode of I Dream of Jeannie, entitled Russian Roulette, at the age of 21. He had a regular supporting role as Ketchum in the TV series Nichols. His numerous credits as supporting actor over the years include such shows as Death Valley Days, Diagnosis Murder, Dan August, Baywatch, Tales from the Crypt, Bonanza, Gunsmoke, Mod Squad, Mission Impossible, Hawaii Five-0, and Matlock, among numerous others. Here he appeared as John W. Poe in the western Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. And in 1975 he was in Rollerball, which is a really cool movie. He played Mark Grayson in Dallas during the middle 1980s, and in the 90s he provided the voice of the Punisher in three episodes of Spider-Man the Animated Series. He also guest starred as Raymond Boone in Star Trek Deep Space Nine episode Tribunal in 1994. A year later he appeared in the film Black Day Blue Night. His increasingly hectic workload between the early 1970s and the mid-1990s wore Beck down to the extent that after leaving Walker, Texas Ranger series in 1997, he began to wind down his acting schedule due to exhaustion. Happy Birthday, Elijah Wood, born January 28, 1981. Elijah Jordan Wood is an American actor, voice actor, DJ, and producer. He is best known for his high-profile leading role as Frodo Baggins in Peter Jackson's epic film trilogy, The Lord of the Rings. He made his film debut with a minor part in Back to the Future Part 2. Landing a succession of larger roles, he was critically acclaimed as a child actor by age nine being nominated for several Young Artist Awards. He began to take on teenage roles in the films The Ice Storm, Deep Impact, and The Faculty. Following The Lord of the Rings, he has chosen varied roles in movies such as Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, Sin City, Green Street, Everything is Illuminated, and Bobby. 
He provided the voice of Mumble in Happy Feet and Happy Feet 2, as well as the lead in the Tim Burton-produced movie Nine. In 2005, he started his own record label, Simeon Records. He did the voice acting for Spyro in Legend of Spyro Trilogy. In 2012, he began voicing Beck in the animated series Tron Uprising, Sigma in the 10th season of the web series Red vs. Blue, and worked in the miniseries Treasure Island and played Wirt in Over the Garden Wall. He played Ryan Newman in Wilford. He co-stars in Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency, which is a fun series. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Happy birthday, Susan Howard. Born January 28, 1944. Jerry Lynn Mooney, better known as Susan Howard, is the American actress who played Mara, the first female Klingon to appear in Star Trek, and one of only two, and the only one with a speaking part, ever seen in the original series, in the episode Day of the Dove. She was a regular on the legal drama series Petroselli. She may be best known for playing Donna Culliver Krebs in the primetime soap opera Dallas from 1979 through 1987. The role actually began with a single guest appearance in 1978, but the producers liked her performance so much that they asked her to return, and she played the character for an additional nine years, and tried her hand at writing for the series, ultimately becoming a member of the Writers Guild of America. She has also been on I Dream of Jeannie, The Flying Nun, Bonanza, Mission Impossible, Here Come the Brides, and has also starred in a number of made-for-TV movies including The Silent Gun, Columbo, The Most Crucial Game, and Superdome. She has been in movies such as Moonshine County Express, Sidewinder 1, and Come the Morning. Remembering John Chandler Born January 28, 1935, and passed away February 16, 2010. In 1961, he played the gangster Vincent Cole in Mad Dog Cole and a teen killer in The Young Savages. In 1962, he played an escaped convict named Dog on The Virginian in the episode entitled The Brazen Bell. He worked with Sam Peckinpah, on three films, Ride the High Country, Major Dundee, and Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. He played Bleak in Adventures in Babysitting. His other westerns include The Outlaw Josie Wells, Return of the Gunfighter, The Good Guys and the Bad Guys, Barcuo, Shootout and Triumphs of a Man Called Horse. On TV, he guest starred in Rifleman, The Travels of Jamie McFeeters, Route 66, Straight Away, The Virginian, A Man Called Shenandoah, Adam 12, Cannon, Gunsmoke, Police Story, Quincy Emmy, Columbo, The Incredible Hulk, B.J. and the Bear, Fantasy Island, T.J. Hooker, Hill Street Blues, Murder, She Wrote, E.R., and Walker, Texas Ranger. He played Fliff in the Star Trek Deep Space Nine sixth season episode, Honor Among Thieves. Happy Birthday, Jillian Vigman. Born January 28, 1972. She is probably most recognizable for her role as Jack's wife in the many Jack in the Box commercials, but is also notable for Mad TV. She also starred in Sons and Daughters and had reoccurring roles in the sitcoms 
Suburgatory, and New Girl. She was on several TV shows like I Love the 90s, Scrubs, World Cup Comedy, and Cupid. After Sons and Daughters, she was on a number of hit shows including According to Jim, Parks and Recreations, and the aforementioned New Girl. Her film credits include The Hangover series, The 40-Year-Old Virgin, After the Sunset, Dragonfly, and Love 101. She voices Dr. Tiana in Star Trek Lower Decks. Well, that's it for today, folks. I appreciate you listening, and uh, if you enjoyed the show, please feel free to tell your friends about uh, little old me here. Have a wonderful day.